It's June 27, 2022. I'm just sitting here trying to catch up on some of the words from whatever's functioning in some time and space that I'm not a part of necessarily, uh, making reference to all sorts of things in this universe or this broken simulation. Um, I see on this West world, it's S3, E5. Um, I see mention of Jonah, J-O-N-A-H. Uh, Jonah and the whale, according to the Catholics on their grid system, is September 21st. It's an anniversary date between Janvier and Avril. That's the truth. Where I have a problem is in my previous engagement. The person that I wanted to be, uh, to grow up with and to grow into was completely overlooked for some non-essential equipment to place the pieces the way that they wanted them for some reason and to really twerk and tweak the system in a really disgusting manner. Um, I see here, uh, they come up to Jonah uh, and they hit Jonah with this dart that goes into this psychotropic, like drug whatever, uh, it not being my fantasy and not being something that I'm on clinical trial for, nor something that I've ever agreed to, nor my parents. Um, uh, the reference is really disturbing. I will say that just prior to this coming on, I did see real quick a reference with... Um, this MacGyver redone, uh, he calls out to somebody, or I think he gets, he's called Blondie, which I thought was interesting because that was my name. Give me your word at Hofstra. Um, I never wanted you to leave. I want you to know that. So anyway, it, season two, episode 17, I caught a real quick glimpse that references why Ukraine is in the state of destruction that it's currently in. They make reference of it there. I won't watch the show, though, because it's absolutely disgusting. It's everything I hate. Apparently, MacGyver is making out and, like, in love with some dirty, disgusting character. Um, I won't even watch the show. I saw the reference on YouTube. At first I was excited because I'm like, oh, it's a reference that might be helpful. And then I'm like, mm, no, can't, can't stomach that. I've seen too much of that. It's all over the New York airwaves and I'm so sick of it. Um, so as far as um, this problem with 1975 I got going on, um, at the freezing at the uncle zone, um, in a real basic context, I mean, he has a history, historically, he has whatever he has, that I did not want to be a part of. I just didn't. To hear the storyline, to whatever. I mean, like, it's a couple of hours of having to put, like, the, like, roll up your sleeves and say, like, all right, where are you at? What was your story? What did you live through? What were you thrown at? What, what came at you? Right, okay. I mean, again, a couple of hours. And then leave. Why is it sticking on the shoe and following me around for, like, I don't even know how many years it's been now. 
Too many. Um, and then there's a conversation of one of the television producers about this exploring this idea of psychotropics in the doctorate category of, right, again, they're like moving targets, I swear, except this one's being useful and telling a very specific part of the story. Um, so they're talking about the cabinet door that they opened or medicine cabinet that they opened in conversation about at like a clinical trial level. So like each one of the degregates, I mean, they call themselves delegates in Long Island is part of some kind of clinical trial. It would appear based on the surveillance that I had to do of what was entering my home that followed me in on my shoe like gum. Not like the, I'll come to you at Hofstra and enjoy like a prior engagement that I wanted. Not like the two that were misconstrued just so there could be some whatever. Um... It's like, I, I feel like I'm looking at everything cross-eyed. I mean, way into it with the limbic system. Cognition, metacognition, human emotion. We already manipulate. Okay, where I am, there's no lectures. There's no ability to gravitate into a forum where they speak of cognition, they speak of meta, like they speak of metacognition, they speak of psychotropic, like they speak of these clinical trials and who's been assigned to what trunch. They don't speak of that. So I don't understand why I, I mean, like I saw on the Vikings, one of the shows, um, that even one of my sons brought to my attention how disturbed he was about Ragnar getting out of the cage and like th being thrown into the pit by the crown with all the snakes. Yeah, I saw the reference. It did hit home on a basic level. And then there's this like in-depth version and I hear, like, the heady people that, like, have all the answers. They've had all the conversations already. They have all the creativity. And then they have all the contacts. Whoopee for you. Big whoop. And I think that that goes with the woe is me category. The drugs that push one chemical up, push it down. You think about psychopharmacology now. The limbic implant is our all-purpose idea for how you eliminate an entire branch of medicine and replace it digitally. You, you take a, a piece of digital medicine and essentially it's a license. It's not even a chemical. What means It's already here, isn't it? Isn't that what the FDA is? Isn't it, The FDA has to license a clinical trial. FDA has to have someone lift up to them some kind of action or suit or whatever. And then this magical three letter something may or may not do something else. I mean, again, at like parks and recreation level, like, I mean, who choreographed this disaster story that I'm stuck in? I'm just curious. Cause like I had prior engagement of like happily ever after in like a charm story from quirky storyline elsewhere. I don't understand how I got into the noir category and it progressively getting worse. To us about that was that it would be prescribable. It would be a physical thing. Brilliant Aaron Paul really having fun. I don't want to get to their level of whatever Sachem went through. Three pillar construction should know since he was not present on the Fidelis that I was aware of. The night that we went to Governor's Island 
to see Oscar G. But there's a whole lot of that night that I can't remember again. And I was around people I don't trust. And I'm sure he wouldn't trust if he knew what was going on and what I was being dragged through. Under the experimental style on a gonzo road trip through hell while spinning out on drugs. <laughs> the craziest drug trip of your life from horror to suspense to action to romance. Like to some people, that's their gig. They love that. They want to live that from the moment they're old enough to try out for clinical trials and have different drugs injected into them and designer parties and what. I am not that kid. I was never going to be that kid. It is not how I am scripted. It is not how I wanted to be. I am in the wrong area of the park physically. And for some reason, they married me to this script that then I have to protect under some marriage certificate of like, once you're married, then they can't use stuff against you as long as you both knew it. In garbage toilet paper that they push around here, along with their disgusting drugs. But these two... That was a lot of fun to shoot, though. ...are on two totally different movie sets. Totally two different genres. And someone's fucking up with choreograph. So I don't know if it's like, uh, you don't... You're like part of this West world in design and creation and all of a sudden... Like, you get in love and locked into these characters and you want to see them do something. Well, the real world, like, because you're just the pretenders. There are real kids in the field. And I don't want your bad ideas to wind up in my real life. But so far, it's been what the life has been. Oh, and here's... Here's a fun scene to explain. So there's the basic argument in theory, hypothesis, and Thessalonian. And then here's it bleeding out because someone shot a hole in your cabinet, in your government, in your air force, in your army. And now you're just bleeding out all over the place. And nobody wants to listen to you because you waited too effing long. Playing around with, like, private jets and concerts and movie cameras, thinking you were going to plug up the holes. Mm-hmm. you give them a seat at the table or a doctorate or a physician's reference guide or any form of words that they could use against you. I am just curious, since this is a superstar conversation between two extremely important that have an outer body experience together with Council and Jedi or whatever in Star Wars. And I'm trapped on this side of the glass. And I don't know where previous engagement went. But perhaps one person might know. I'd say it's in a superstar category. Let's go. Hold on. Oh, no. It's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. This person in Long Island has a lot of friends, a lot of family, a lot of history. Woohoo! Then why don't any of them know there should have never been a Tina wedding? When the local Jewish representative came over from their service to speak with Lewis and I, he called me a schwixer. 
means I'm non-Jewish. I'm like, whatever. At the moment, I know it gets confusing between J-U and S-U in Italian only. And so, um, he was helpful in clarifying and giving me that word, at least. Um, because, again, I don't belong in a Tina. He said that's something that's just left around and easy. That's why I called the wedding to both the crazy donkey and this last stuck to my bottom of my shoe. I call it a Tony and Tina wedding. Trump should know about Tony and Tina weddings, considering he hired some or he allowed Mike Mirza, who worked for him in security with Maria, to invite me at age 16 into a limo, a TV show, and then to stay in the, the penthouse of Trump Plaza. Oh, look at that. When I was only 16, where did my life go? And where's my prior engagement? I'm just curious. There is a system of the chosen, of the whatever. Again, I'm an endangered human species. I have RH negative blood at the ABO. The AMA does recognize such a thing. They do know that when I carry a child by mixing me or concubining me, with an RH positive person that I don't want to be with, it puts my life in danger. Those are facts. They actually give a medication called Rogam. More facts. R-H-O-G-A-M. So this way I can still carry since I'm the classification species of human that is high demand but short supply especially with the express genes in certain certain area so they do come up with some kind of clinical trialed shot that they give if there's any chance that the disgusting that touched me since I don't have my prior engagement, the respectful one that I was built and born and designed for before it was rerouted. And, you know, they've done it and I'm witness to it. You didn't really understand what we made, what you were, but we did. He only saw the money he could make. We realize the power of it. That they only realize the money they could make in motivation. What motivated them? Hmm. And then when they were told that they couldn't do it, is that who leaked the information to the even bigger problem and blew this entire thing out of proportion in such a dangerous radiological scale. I'm just curious because at MacGyver episode two, uh, a season two, episode 17 talks about gamma radiation, nuclear waste, and some other interesting topics that also are not talked of around here. And there's no like lecture hall. There's no like invitation to go see like really important scientists speak. It's like as if that whole world doesn't exist for my one person as I'm locked in this situation. Spring reshaped the world. My brother and I charted a course for the entire human race. Humanity's story had been improvised. Now it was planned years in advance. For a time, the sun and moon aligned. We brought order from chaos. And then, as with all the best laid plans, it began to fall apart. Dempsey became greedy, drove outcomes to benefit himself. So we locked him out of the system. But there was a bigger problem. 
In every projection, the world came unglued. There were people, outliers, agitators, who you couldn't predict or control. And I realized that my brother was one of them. He didn't fit the world. This, I understand. Like, see, that that load of logic. Um, mm, mm, I'm not really buying it. However, um, I know that this little rendition here goes to um, explain how one very, really important person was not mentally ill or deficient. Um, because, like, how could a child know about the future or the existence of somebody that they've never met? Um, who may be calling out to them for help in some part of a lifetime. Um, to people who you need to help, but don't live within that same time and space framework. And... More in the world didn't fit him. What now? See how her eyes are doing that? Um, my eyes have been shifting between uh, the white being incredibly pronounced and then the hazel coming out. I don't know why ocularly um, it's been that way. But it has a very distinct shape just outside the Calvin region, going into the gaseous space of the iris, or what the locals classify as the iris. <clears throat> We're going to open their cages. The system's right in our life story, they should get to read it. You can't do that. That's reckless. Okay, basic argument, I totally agree. I would never allow this group who's brought this plague upon the system and in this area to live at this level of knowing. I just wouldn't. It only leads to bigger problems. Um, it's some kind of, again, storyline. I don't know. What is it? Cause is this like someone's defense of what they've already done in letting too many people know the wrong type of people know and growing networks where networks never existed before in Ivy league and then state schools and then King's college and then creating an ignoramus in college farce. You have no idea what they'll do in response. It could lead to suicides, murder. Murder? He knows something about that. I'm sorry. I'm so fucking sorry. That wasn't, wasn't my choice. I could never bring myself to hurt you. Don't forget I know you. And you wouldn't hurt me. You'd pay someone to do it for you. And that's been a reoccurring theme throughout my life. Just saying, it has. I don't know the people who harm me, and then all of a sudden I wake up with people who say that they're there to help. Or that they found me. Or that they whatever. And I have no idea how I got there who was involved, and who to tell. It's their fate, their data. You just stole it and put it all together. Why should you control it? This isn't about me or insight. There are some things people should know about themselves. Who gets to decide what they know? Yeah, see, that's the funny thing, is that that used to be the way it went. And I think at some point in my life frame, after Alexander was born, there was a big push for this ancestry thing, which I tried to get a hold of 
There was somebody on the phone who said he was in charge of Tillis, whatever that is. I have no idea. But then I had to get home Department of Homeland Security. I had to schedule a phone call. I had a special number I had to call. And then again, after I completed that task, I got zero information. And then it all like just digitally disappeared. Like that avenue I wanted to pursue. Like I wasn't even an option available to me. So it was taken out of my ability to recall, ability to pursue, and ability to stay interested in over a long haul and a long period. Those are the bigger issues. You? Fine. You want to see? Take your friend here. He'll be lucky if he ends up... I didn't want to go into this part. Now, this is interesting because here there's this conversation where he gets up and he goes like, hope is something like that our society is built on. And it's like, right, no, that's when the society worked and there was no dysfunction, malfunction or bullet holes with some exsanguinating argument in some open cabinetry. And people were locked in place, hunkered down. No ability to travel far and wide and cause massive, like, problems. But that's not the society now in genre because of way too much chaos plaguing the system virally. Painlessly. So some of these arguments don't even work in Grand Concourse any longer. Um, I had what I thought in midsize SUV um, that worked in some function capacity at like really important people who knew that I had a prior engagement, who knew I didn't want to miss my date, um, who knew that I, you know, they knew a lot of things. Um, in fact, it was, I'm pretty sure the people who dropped me off after spring break with Dan, um, and just a out-of-body experience, I don't know, is that the spiritual, like, time just stood still, I mean, like, I don't know if the humans, I mean, I think Linda said she, the whole week went by, I mean, but again, categorically, I don't know if she was just uploaded with some sense or semblance of reality that I disappeared for a week. Um, hard to tell because her and I aren't really conversationalists. Uh, and I was very happy with Niklaus and um, with who had come to visit me quite a few times who I wanted to go off into that direction. Um, but something around this like 91, 92, 93 time period in a faraway land with some Soviet Union mention and some breakup and what contacts will still be together and who will still be accessible. I mean, I had no access from that I was aware of since youth. I don't know if there was an intermediary uh, involved and I don't know how to signal such a person being stuck in this situation in the field at effect of all these other circumstances. Um, but there was somebody who informed me outside of my blondie whatever um, that he was in charge of the ugly which I did not know what that U-G-L-Y meant. Um, not a word used at home. Not a word I had, I had heard in um, early 90s used out in public. It was a new vocabulary word for me. Um, there was some background statistical understate, overstate, I don't know that connected with my whatever humanness 
um, cognitively. So I kind of understood what he meant by saying the word, but I didn't really know the whole construct linguistically or vernacularly, spiritually or otherwise of where he was taking the conversation with that and what he really, really meant if it was more in depth or if I needed a more in depth knowledge of it, I wasn't clear. Excellent. Future. It'll be done. You've all been riding the train. You want to show them the rails? Do it. Again, if I wind up in the wrong area of the park, if someone rewrote a storyline unauthorized by, I don't know, at some point, Benelton showed up. I showed up at home, and they had a bobcat working on the house in the front, pushing around dirt. Um, they had hired an architect to redesign the front of the high ranch um, at, like, JU standards. Um, and I woke up one morning and I went into the closet and in the closet was a rugby shirt. It was royal blue on top and on the bottom and in the center it was like a white. And it had, I, I mean, like it looked very Benelton for clothing line, but I don't know if it really was or not. Um, I'd never seen a shirt like that ever before. I had no idea how it arrived in my closet. But she said to put on something to go outside. So I was like, did she buy me new clothes? I was like, looks very boyish. So I put it on and I went outside and I'm like, mom, I was like, how do I look? And she really didn't say anything about the shirt. I'm like, is this new? Did you just, and she's like, no, where did that come from? I'm like, I don't know. I just found it in my closet. Weird, strange occurrences have been happening my whole life. Star 1978, Star 8378, Nicole Kataruza, it's Earth, Solar System, Milky Way, Universe, Galaxy is broken, and it's Bayside Station, Bayside, New York, 11361. 